Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. I saw everyone chatting in the comments before the show, so thanks so much uh, if you jump on a little bit early to chat with your fellow bag makers. I see Mary's watching from Delaware. Um, Danny, when you come over here, can yeah, you, uh, screen, thank yeah. you. Our TV screen is a little out of place and I, I, the comments are getting cut off in my view, but welcome to Social Sunday. Uh, Danny will be joining me in just a second. Um, he usually likes to make sure the technology is running as it's supposed to before he jumps on set with me. We are going to leave a little bit of extra time this evening for answering questions because last Sunday, Danny mentioned there were Lots and lots of really great questions coming through and we didn't have time to answer all of them. Well, we never have time to answer all of them, but we're going to leave a little bit of extra time in tonight's show to answer more questions. This past week, I've been busy working on that. Um, my favorite color is Moda Sampler Quilt that I started last week. So I have five more blocks left. Uh, here's my, I know it's a very small view, but here's the um, quilt that I'm working on. The blocks range in size from smaller blocks. I think nine inch square is the smallest block and the biggest block is 36 inches square, which is, I made that 36 inch block the other day and I, I told Danny, I said, you know, I know this is not a mini quilt. This is part of the sampler quilt, but isn't this a big block? Hello. Sarah, move over a little bit. How are you? Oh, sorry. I can't fit in. There we go. <laughs> so we'll see if I can finish that quilt this week. Um, if I do, I'll, I'll share it with you on next Sunday's uh, Social Sunday show. So uh, we wanted to feature, lately we've been featuring your bag making shops, either a shop on Etsy, Facebook, Instagram, if you have uh, your own website. Um, if you would like to add a link for us uh, to add to our collection of shop links that we can feature on the show, there's a link in the description and it's just a really short survey. Um, you can fill out and submit it to us and the featured shop for tonight is Nicole Stitching Up and Nicole has a lot of really fun projects in her shop. Did you want to, I'm not sure which picture it is. Well, for I the... wonder which one could oh, it be. Shop. The one that's labeled shop, okay. Um, so this is Nicole stitching up. The link to Nicole's uh, Etsy shop is in the description. Nicole made a day trip cell phone wallet. This is a Clyde Bank tote with cork on the sides. I really love the cork because it just sort of blends, it matches that fabric perfectly, let's, let's put it that way. Um, Nicole Cole also made a Renegade bag with a matching persimmon dumpling pouch. I really love, I have that same fabric. I haven't used it yet, but I really love it. A Rockstar bag with, uh, again, a coordinating persimmon dumpling pouch. Uh, the Beetlejuice theme, I really love that. And I think I have a couple more. Um, a patchwork style persimmon dumpling pouch. This one was made with Allison Glass fabrics. And let's see what else I chose. Uh, a tower crossbody bag. I love the large scale floral. I love that Nicole added the accent fabric along the bottom of the bag. It turned out great. She's got a lot of beautiful, beautiful things in her shop. And again, the link to Nicole's Etsy shop is in the description in case you're interested in checking that out. So Danny's second favorite part of the Sunday show when he's on it with me, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We're so happy that you're joining us for Social Sunday, whether you watch us live or later on in the week if you watch the recording. So thank you so much for making time in your busy schedules to tune in to Social Sunday. Yeah, you know, there was actually a comment about that. A lady, oh, sure. Michelle. Okay, let's see. Oh, no, this is um, M. Teresa Lopez. Okay. Um, I changed my work schedule so I could watch live more fun than watching the recording and I also have it on my calendar. Well, that's awesome. I feel very honored that you made that time in your schedule in that way. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, and let's get over to your pick of the week. Sure. My pick of the week is Helena Bloomstrand. Um, she, Hackney Pouch is what she made. And you know, I love the um, Tula Pink fabric she chose and the zippers. You'll see as the pictures go along. Sarah coaxed me to let the picture stay for 10 seconds, maybe a little long. It's actually the Frisian pouch. I didn't want to. Oh, cut you dang. Off, I'm sorry. 
it's close. I, I guess yeah, they it's sort of got have the three a, zippers. a similar yeah. shape, but. Yep. But I love the colors on the inside. I mean, just awesome. I loved everything about this one. I love that she used three different colors for the lining because it makes it very apparent when you're unzipping it, which section that you're putting your things in. So cool. And she's got a fun picture with her pet hamster. Mm -hmm. Five seconds would have been better, I think, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see. I see that now. <laughs> It's a hard call because five seconds seems so quick, especially when you're talking about a project. Um, but I can see what you're saying. Ten seconds is a little bit long. I'm looking forward to that hamster picture. I saw it earlier. I giggled at first because like yeah. the hamster's hanging out with the skunk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so great job. Fantastic photos. Love seeing your pets in your photos. And, and Helena, you know, you're also really great in the Facebook group. You're always very supportive and helpful. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that too, Helena. All right. So um, if you've been watching the show for a while, you know that Danny always has his pick of the week when he's on the show with me live. And is there something you usually look for when you're going through trying to choose a picture for the something show? Something that or? makes me happy when I look at it. If I look at it and I get a smile on my face, it doesn't have to be the, the best looking one or the most perfect picture. Um, sure, that does help, but something that just looks unique and something that I like, you know, that's what it's important. Are to me. there particular fabrics that jump out at, at you when you're looking? You know, I don't know all the different fabrics, but I do obviously like Tulip Pink. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't say I have a an only selection of Tulip Pinks and stuff like that. I like a lot of different Video brands. game, I know you've chosen some like... Uh... Yeah, Doctor Who sci-fi stuff mm -hmm. is always, you know, great too, but yeah. I know I don't want to keep doing that all the time. Otherwise, I won't be on the show anymore. <laughs> All right. So as promised, we did leave some extra time for questions. So if you have a question for me, type I that. I have to change something because it looks like the Facebook oh, okay. questions, are, they came through, but it looks like they stopped. And I just want to make sure unless, if you're on Facebook, just write, hey, um, I'm on Facebook and I, I just want to see if your comments are coming through because they initially did, but I don't see them anymore. It's just YouTube. So if it's not coming through, I'll go in there and fix it up. Okay, so if you do have a question for me, you can type that in the comments right now. It can be a bag making related question, general sewing question, question about a notion or tool. You can type a little question mark before your question, or you can type it in capital letters. It just helps Danny pull the, the questions from among all of the comments. And uh, Danny left me a question to get started with, and he'll be back in a second. He's going to check, see what's going on with uh, the Facebook stream. So Kristen says, do you use your fabric scissors to cut your SF-101 and soft and stable as well? So that's a really great question. Um, I get a lot of questions about my the scissors that I use. Um, I have them right here since I often use them for the very beginning of the show. These are Kai scissors, model number 7205. I've had them for a few years. In fact, I have two pairs because um, what happened? A few years ago, I thought I misplaced a, this pair of Kai scissors that I had. Couldn't find them anywhere, so I ordered a second pair, and then eventually I found both of them. So I, I have two pairs of these scissors now, which is fine. So I can have one at my ironing board, one at my cutting table, but I do use my fabric scissors for cutting out the fabric for my projects, as well as interfacing, so shape flex, foam interfacing, <clears throat> Peltex. I am generally in the habit of cutting out my pieces um, especially squares and rectangles with scissors rather than a rotary cutter, but of course the rotary cutter would work just uh, Oops, fine as well. Did you get that situated? Yeah, fix it. Okay, excellent. I'm glad. Thank it you, wasn't... everyone, who commented. Uh, yes, uh, appreciative. It did help because I did not see them come through. So thank you for doing that. Okay, I see you have another question ready for me. Debbie wants to know how many hours a day do you devote to sewing? So that's a tough call. Uh, when I first started my blog in 2010. I would sew probably at least six hours a day. I would, every spare minute I would devote to sewing, but running a business, there's a lot more behind the scenes work involved, uh, a lot of work at the computer. So the sewing time has decreased a little bit, but um, at least a couple hours a day. The, the sampler quilt I've been working on the past week, I'll work on it between two to six hours, depending on what I'm feeling that day. Um, so yes, oh, sewing over time has gone down, um, but a lot of designing, a lot of the designing work I spend at the computer. So if you're calculating the time based on that, uh, just because I'm at the computer, I don't mean I'm not enjoying myself. It's still, uh, 
an enjoyable experience for me, just a little bit different, um, drawing out pattern pieces, writing instructions and all that. Lydia says, my husband is getting me an anti antique motorcycle, small one, of course, and we'll need a bag for it. Any ideas? Um, my dad has a motorcycle, but I guess I have not given it much thought about what type of bag would be good for that. I know there's some motorcycle riders that watch the show. So if you prefer a certain style of bag, let us know in the comments. Danny will look out for that. Perhaps we can post it on the screen. Um, I've only been on a motorcycle, my dad's motorcycle with him one time and that's it. So, uh, I guess I, it's just not an area I have a lot of experience with. Judy says, EpiPen case, which of the minikins? Um, I'm trying to think through my head. I've seen over the years people make cases for EpiPens. Um, I know it's different, but I saw someone post, uh, this morning, I think in the Facebook group, a Creative Maker supply case made for diabetic supplies. Um, again, let me know in the comments if you've made one for a family member yourself or a friend for an epi pen and which so sweetness pattern that you used for that. Again, we'll look out for uh, that comment to come through and Danny can post that on the screen. Wendy says, which minikins is easiest for a beginner? So if you're looking at minikins season three, which is the most recent bundle, um, the easiest to, I feel like the Brumby pouch is the easiest followed by the Connemara pouch. Um, those have minimal pieces to cut out and sew together and are faster, less involved um, compared to some of the other projects. Um, but I think those would be a great place to get started um, if you um, have recently got your Minikin Season 3 bundle. Christina says, are you going to be at any events or retreats this year? Uh, it's been a couple of years since I taught in person. Um, Four years ago is when we started live streaming and producing videos and um, uh, I really I really love working on the videos and the live shows because Danny and it's something Danny and I can work on together and if, if I was traveling to teach I always uh, traveled by myself so I don't have anything scheduled. Uh, when I used to teach I used to schedule about two years out so um, for this year I have nothing scheduled but in future who knows. Lisa says, what software do you use to design patterns? That's a really great question. So <clears throat> there's a few that come into play. I draw my pattern pieces out in Adobe Illustrator. I use Adobe InDesign, InDesign to write the instructions, my step photos and photos that I prepare for my blog. Um, I take care of those in Adobe Photoshop and I have a video, I think it's about 10 minutes long, a video on my YouTube channel about my design process. So if you just go over to the So Sweetness YouTube channel in the search box, type in design process, that video should pop up. I see people saying the iSpy pouch as well mm -hmm. as the Hackney pouch for the EpiPen. Oh, EpiPen, okay, great. So EpiPen suggestions uh, from the comments, um, iSpy pouch, Hackney pouch, that was the other one. Okay, excellent, thank you everybody. Um, Alicia says, what can I use besides Decoville Light or Heavy in bags? So for Decoville Light, <clears throat> I feel like um, Pellon Decker Bond, which is product number 809, is a really good substitute. It's fairly close. Um, Decoville Heavy, there's not an interfacing that's exactly the same, but I do feel that Pellon Peltex is a good interfacing to replace that with as far as stiffness goes. And I do have a video on my YouTube channel comparing Decoville Light and Decoville Heavy. So if you, again, go to the So Sweetness channel, just type in Decoville, that video should pop up for you in case you'd like to check that out. Um, I, it's been a few months since I did that one, but um, if I'm remembering correctly, I had some samples prepared, both cut out and attached to fabric. And then I, I talked through um, the differences between the, the two, light and heavy. Jeannie says, how would I go about making box gussets on the tower crossbody bag? Um, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. I guess this is one of those questions where I would need uh, a few minutes to think about it, but feel free to email me after the show. I'm happy to take a second look. Uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Um, Fawn wants to know, is there a So Sweetness Club in Houston, Texas? So we do have So Sweetness groups. We, ha we do have our main So Sweetness group and we do have groups by states in the United States as well as many countries. If you'll just type in your Facebook search box, SSSP, so that's three S's, SSSP space Texas, the, the group for Texas should pop up. 
Um, it's for the state rather than a particular city, but um, you should be able to find um, other local Texas sewists in that group. Christy says, I'm afraid to sew with cork. Is there a trick I should know and does it tear easily? So that's a great question. The cork, at least the cork that I sell in my shop is bonded to uh, a backing fabric, which is a cotton polyester blend fabric. Um, it should not tear, but I do have a video on my YouTube channel, how to sew with cork fabric, and you should check that out. I talk um, a little bit about different feed options, the thread I use for sewing with cork, and um, I really enjoy working with it, whether you're using it for the entire project or you can just mix in smaller portions of cork, such as for accents, handles, straps, things like that. <clears throat> um, this question is from Kate. Do you find using the duckbill scissors helps when removing some foam interfacing out of the seam allowance? So this is a great question. The duckbill scissors have, um, uh, I don't have a pair with me to hold up, but one of the halves of the scissor is sort of a flat portion that kind of holds back um, the layer of fabric away from the scissors that you don't want to cut. So in the instance of that question, if you wanted to just trim back your foam but not cut the fabric at all, um, duckbill scissors are a really great option because they help keep the fabric out of the way so you can only cut the foam. Linda says, wondering when you are getting number three in other colors and different style pulls. Um, Perhaps that's something to investigate for our next zipper order. I'll, I'll need to be placing another zipper order soon. I did plan on ordering number three pulls and, <clears throat> excuse me, number three tape in different finishes such as rose gold and gunmetal. I haven't placed that order yet and normally it takes at least a couple months to come in. So I do have that on my list for my next order though. Shirley says, can you embroider on cork? Yes, you can. Um, I had some friends make some samples of embroidered images on cork fabric for me. This was before I got my embroidery machine. I have not yet personally embroidered on cork fabric, but a uh, word on the street is that you should float the cork rather than hooping it to avoid uh, creasing your cork fabric. Sarah wants to know, do you always use a heavier weight thread for top stitching? So that's a great question. <clears throat> I am using 40 weights or full thread for stitching the bags together and I also use the same weight thread for top stitching. You could use a heavier weight thread for the top stitching, but um, I guess I, I feel like that 40 weight is enough as far as um, the kind of thickness that I like. Next question is what is your favorite rotary cutter? So I have, just like scissors, I have a bunch of rotary cutters. Actually, Danny, can you grab that uh, rotary cutter purple? Thank you. This is the one I was using earlier today. Um, it's uh, by Olfa, 45 millimeter blade in it. I have a couple of Olfa rotary cutters. I also have one from Kai. Um, I like all of them, they all work great. This is the one that I happen to use the most often and I also have a pink one. You know, I noticed that I've seen a few of these, I'll post them. I love the support we get from our community. Um, they're like, you know, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the like button. You know, we thank you for that, you know, <laughs> and we great. do see you guys hitting the like button and we do appreciate it. Also, we're really, I know you were hoping to get soon to 100,000 subscribers over on YouTube so we can um, start releasing, releasing some merchandise like stickers and t-shirts and those kind of things. And we're really close. We're almost at 98,000 subscribers on YouTube. So we really appreciate the subscribes as well as the likes and um, really close. I think you were estimating May and I think it's going to be May. I think you'll be about correct with that estimate. See, I was going to post that question, <clears throat> but since you answered this one. Oh, I didn't answer the previous one. I'll go back, we'll to, go back it. to it. Okay. Um, Kathy says almost April, Danny, how close is YouTube to the magic number? Yeah. Yeah. Super, super, super close. Um, are you going to see the Bisa Butler quilting exhibit at the Art Institute in Chicago? Wish I lived closer. Um, I do follow her on Instagram. I love her work. If you're not familiar with her, Google her and you can see her amazing art quilts. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, to answer that question, I'm honestly not sure. Not sure. Um, I will try to schedule it into my calendar, see if I can make it uh, safely. Um, but uh, thank you. I actually wasn't aware that, that that exhibit was coming to Chicago, but super close by to where we live. Um, I wanted to buy some headliner, but I'm confused on what type is needed. Foam backed, not foam backed, perforated, not perforated. Um, I'm, I actually, 
I've had some automotive headliner samples before. I have not actually sewn with them, so I'm not sure the differences between perforated, non-perforated. Um, the easiest to sew with, if you can find it, will be um, a foam with a thin layer of fabric on the top and the bottom. Um, it's easier to sew with, uh, easier on your feed dogs on your sewing machine as well. <clears throat> Julie wants to know, when designing a new pattern, how many times do you make and test the bag before it's ready to sell, and what do you do with your tester bags? So generally when I'm working with a, uh, a brand new pattern, if it's a type of construction that I'm not sure how the pieces will fit to, together, I'll make a little prototype first with foam interfacing, so no fabric involved, there won't be a lining, um, I will sew in the zipper, but it's usually just sort of a, for example, I had this um, pie ball pouch sitting on the table. So when I first started designing this particular pattern, I wasn't sure, as you can see, there's about three pieces. So there's this front piece, there's the flat piece, and then the pe there's the piece that wraps around the back. So everything has to fit together just so. Um, my prototype for this one, which I still have uh, upstairs in our bedroom is, <clears throat> Just foam interfacing. So what I did first was I designed the pattern pieces what I with what I thought they would be on the computer because it's easier for me to draw them out on the computer first and then print them out and test them rather than <clears throat> hand drawing them and having to scan them into the computer. It's just easier for me starting from the computer straight off. And so I made a little prototype with foam interfacing. I made actually a, I had to make a few. Do you remember me asking? Yes. Yeah. While I was working on the prototypes, I asked Danny, I don't know, does this look right? What curve looks better? Yes, yeah, the curve of the zipper okay? And so on. So if it's a construction I'm not sure about, I'll make a little uh, prototype with only foam. Sometimes with bags, I'm fairly confident, um, especially if it's a bag that uh, doesn't have like a top zipper or per perhaps it has a flap. Usually those pieces for me are a little bit easier to figure out how they'll go together. And so for that, I'll draw the pieces out on the computer and then just cut all the fabric and interfacing out. And I make adjustments uh, because I write the instructions very first thing. I make adjustments as I'm sewing. So as far as the patterns being tested, uh, the patterns are tested before we release them. I go, th go through the tester notes and make changes to the, the pattern based on the tester feedback. And so um, the patterns are worked over a whole bunch uh, by myself, the testers, and when we're in fact filming the video for the pattern, I'm writing notes in my finalized pattern while I'm filming the video. And so uh, I go over everything a whole bunch of times before uh, the patterns are ever released on our website. Marlene says, have you ever sewn with Tex 40 thread? I have a TL 18 QVP. Would that thread work well for bag making? Um, I actually have no experience with the Tex 40 thread. If uh, you're watching and you do, let us know in the comments and Danny will look out for that so that we can post it on the screen. Kaylin says, any tips on sewing through multiple layers of batting and soft and stable and or strapping? So usually uh, I'm sewing those multiple layers with my regular stitch length um, on my machine. It might be a little different on your machine, but on my machine that's two and a half millimeters as far as sewing all the seams. For top stitching, especially with thicker layers like that, I like to increase my stitch length to three millimeters for the top stitching. Um, a walking foot, if your machine is having is, is having a little bit of a struggle, a walking foot can help with that. Um, I use um, a Microtex needle, which is a 9014 needle, and, needle, and I feel like that works uh, really great with um, thick layers. And uh, I do use the same needles for I don't often machine quilt through batting, but when I do, I would use my walking foots with uh, that same needle. Dee says, other, um, other than that you have a straight stitch Yuki, is there a reason not to use a zigzag stitch on seam edges? So if you'd like to, to reinforce your stitching, perhaps go through once with a straight stitch and then reinforce with a zigzag, perhaps so just uh, a tiny bit further away from the stitching line um, toward the raw edge, of course. Um, you can certainly do that. Um, I don't, obviously, because as you mentioned, uh, my machine is a straight stitch only. Mary says, how often do you get your Juki service? So I, before the pandemic, I was trying to get it serviced about every year and a half. 
Um, obviously, since the pandemic, uh, I'm a little bit behind schedule, but I'm hoping later in the year to, I do have two machines. So while one is being serviced, I can still sew. So that's my plan. Hopefully later in the year, take one in because I think I don't want to let it get too long because when you when you skip those maintenance um, uh, services on your machine, sometimes uh, the bigger problems arise. And so it's good to stick with a regular maintenance schedule so the sewing machine technician can take a, a look at your machine before something goes wrong. And many can- Sorry, you can take a drink. You don't have to, I see you gonna keep grabbing for it. Go ahead. No, you know, cause we, we just had dinner before the show and I feel like my throat is like, I don't know. You sound like you have a little, little bit scratchy. Yeah. In Minikins 3, most of the Pattern State handbag zipper is this the number five size. So it can be either a number five or a number 4.5, which is also considered a handbag zipper. The By Annie's zippers that I saw on my website are number 4.5, but are still considered handbag zippers and still have the larger handbag type pulls. Wendy wants to know, can you do a video on how to use the SVG files for a Cricut machine? <clears throat> uh, I didn't have this on the list and I kind of sort of hesitated on it just because uh, uh, not everyone has a, a, a an electric cutting machine and if they do, they might have a different brand such as a Brother or a Silhouette. Um, if you're needing help with pulling up the SVG files into your Cricut Design Space software, um, I suggest for the time being, uh, check on YouTube. There's a lot of great videos on how to pull up the files, how to make sure they're the proper size. And we provide um, a one inch square on all of the SVG files so that you can make sure your file is the correct size before um, cutting out. And it's not a bad idea to do a little test cut with uh, paper or cardstock before you cut into your fabric with your machine. Kim says, how do you determine which thread to put in the bobbin and which to put in the top? Not sure when or why or what to do or not to do things. So that's a really great question. So if you're sewing with either 40 weight thread or 50 weight thread, I usually use 40 weight thread. I do use the same thread in the top and in the bobbin. If you're using a thicker thread, perhaps for top stitching, say for instance, you're using a 12 weight thread. Um, if I'm using a 12 weight thread, which I don't do very often, but once in a while, the 12 weight thread will go in the top of the machine and I'll put 40 weight thread in the bobbin. Having 12 weight in the top and in the bobbin won't work just because of the thickness. And so you just want to use a step down, which is why I would use 40 weight thread in the bobbin um, to make it easier for your machine. But um, again, either 40 weight, 50 weight, or even 30 weight you can use in both the top and the bobbin. Susan says, have you ever done a tutorial on metal frames like on the silver cinema bag? Um, I have not, we've not done a video for the silver cinema bag, but we do have the coin purse, um, Suffolk coin purse, which is a free pattern and video. You can find the video on YouTube and that particular pattern does call for similar glue in metal purse frames. And um, since it's free, you can find it on YouTube or on my website. Carla wants to know what bag would you suggest to hold sewing machine feet and parts? Um, there's a couple that might work for that. I have seen a few people use um, either the Creative Maker Supply Case or the Ultimate Art Organizer and modifying either of those patterns a little bit to, to have, um, mo in most cases, clear vinyl so that you can see either, you can pack either needles or sewing machine feet um, I do have a tutorial video on YouTube, how to add um, needle sleeves to your project. And you, you can use that to adapt for uh, sewing, machine feet, sewing machine feet as well, um, if you'd like to do that. Dee Dee wants to know, when do you expect zippers by the yard in black and white with silver coils? Um, I guess I didn't know we were out of those. We do have a zipper order on the way shortly. Um, so if you, if you'd like to, you can sign yourself up for our out of stock notification on the website. What that means is any item on our website that's out of stock, you can submit your email address on the product listing, and then you'll just be automatically notified when, when I list that product back in stock. And if there are size or color options for that product, you'll just need to select that from the drop down box first. And then that email box will pop up after that. Rhonda wants to know which bag would be easiest to sew using cork fabric. So I do have the six quick cork projects, which are really quick 10 minute projects. Um, those are free. You can find those either on my website or on YouTube. And again, it's called six quick cork projects. Um, so that's a, a great way to 
get your feet wet with sewing with cork. The Baker Street bag, which is, is a beginner friendly pattern. It's free again on my website and on YouTube. Um, I did make a version all out of cork fabric. So that's uh, another good one, a bit of a larger project to try out with uh, cork. And also the Easy Leather Hobo bag can also be made with cork fabric. And again, that one's also free. I saw multiple people say the Kanga as well as I Spy for the feet. Kanga, oh, the Kanga would be awesome for sewing machine feet. The Kanga supply roll is part of Minikin season two. Um, I use mine for my makeup, but that would be great for sewing machine feet and other sewing supplies also. Um, Diane says, have you ever heard of Gotham sewing machine? Um, I haven't, is that a, I know there's Gotham quilts. Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll write that down. I'll have to look at look that up after the show. Machine. Wendy wants to know, heard you should use polyester thread for bags since it has some give to avoid popping stitches versus cotton, is that true? I believe Orifil is 100% cotton. So Orifil is 100% cotton thread. Um, I use cotton thread. You can use polyester thread is completely fine as well, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, the differences between cotton versus polyester, um, and I, I should say I've never had a bag tear or rip a finished bag, um, but cotton, polyester will will likely never snap. It's, it's just stronger than cotton. Cotton is a natural fiber. Um, I made the mistake of making a rather fitted dress with uh, quilting cotton and I used uh, cotton thread. And uh, I remember one time, this was years ago, bending over in the back of the dress, I could hear the all the threads like, all, all of them ripping. So for garments, for sure, I would use the polyester thread, but uh, for bag making, you can use whatever you're, you're most comfortable with. And like I said, I've never had uh, a finished bag made with that cotton thread tear or rip or anything. Um, Denise wants to know, how can I share some of my cross stitch pieces with Sarah? You can always email me. Um, we do have three people answering emails, myself, Danny and Bronwyn, um, but any personal emails uh, that seem like they're addressed to me, I, I always answer those myself. Um, and again, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Um, Karen asks, do you have a video talking about the different sizes and types of zippers? I do. Um, on, you, on my YouTube channel or on my website. Um, if you're looking on YouTube in the So Sweetness search box, just type in types of zippers and that video will come up. Terry wants to know, Sarah, you recommended Orifil Thread. I did get some from you and I am so hooked. It made such a difference with several, several of my machines. I'm glad you liked it. Um, it's my personal favorite. I have a lot of different colors. Um, not as many as I would like because sometimes I have to use a slightly different color um, than the fabric that I'm using, but um, I like it. Uh, it's, I feel like it's very lint free. Um, if you hold the thread up, uh, the lint looking appearance is way less than some other threads that I've had in the past. So, uh, I'm super happy with it. Karen wants to know what tulip needles do you recommend for wool applique? Uh, we do sell, sell some tu tulip needles in the shop, just in one size. I think they're the number 10 with the big eye. Um, I've, Years ago, I dabbled a little bit in wool applique. Um, certainly not by far any kind of expert in it, but um, again, those are really great needles and I, I've used them for other types of projects as well. <clears throat> um, Terry wants to know, I'm about to start fabric painting. Do you, if so, do you use a color projector when done? I heard, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, um, is good, but I know nothing. So I've never fabric painted. I have admired fabric painting from afar. Um, fabric painting, um, maybe hopefully I'm describing this correctly, is kind of like embroidery but done on the sewing machine. So using fabric to fill in the designs, different colors of threads and all that. Um, I've seen some beautiful work online of of fabric paint, uh, thread painting, but I've not done it myself. Um, perhaps uh, should put it on my list of things that I'd like to learn this year. Um, Kristen says you can share your cross stitch in the Facebook group on Maker Monday post. Oh yeah, that's another great one. Um, although Maker Monday, there's usually hundreds of posts and I, I don't see all of them, but um, Maker Monday, yes, Maker Monday is every Monday. And in that particular Maker Monday thread, you can post uh, your finishes of non so sweetness projects. So perhaps if you knitted a pair of socks, if you did some thread painting, um, if you completed some cross stitch, that 
that's the post to post that or like I mentioned earlier you can email me as well Nancy says oops does Peltex come as a fusible I think I got the wrong stuff if it does so Peltex comes three different ways made by Pelon um, Peltex number 70 is the sewn version Peltex number 71 is a single-sided fusible and Peltex number 72 is a double-sided fusible so I like the first two um, I usually don't recommend the double-sided fusible because especially if you're um, pressing and top stitching as you're working on the bag having the double-sided fusible uh, gets a little bit tricky um, Denny says do you ever serge your edges uh, I actually don't um, just stitch them and press them and and move on Brenda wants to know there are handbag zippers versus non handbag zippers so a handbag zipper I would consider either a number five or a number 4.5 the zipper tape is approximately one and a quarter of an inch wide generally has a little bit larger of a pull um, another common zipper size that I use is a number three zipper which is also known as a dress skirt zipper and that zipper tape is usually about um, usually a hair larger wider than seven eighths of an inch so the zipper tape width is different as well as usually the size of the pulls oh tons of questions this week that's great um kelly is asking just wondering why i used a number three zipper for the piebald it's the first i want to make and i only have number uh five zipper so this one let's see if danny remembers the answer to this question remember when i was sewing these prototypes i was trying different zippers right Two. that i don't remember you don't remember okay I guess I'll just answer it then so uh, this project is made this is the piebald from minikin season three this project is made with a number three zipper I did try a few prototypes with the number five zipper which is the handbag zipper and I just felt that the the wider zipper tape kind of made uh, like a lip in the the zipper tape and it kind of maybe I was just being too picky but I kind of felt like I needed it to lay a little bit nicer especially in the front area over here and flatter and having the thinner zipper tape the number three zipper tape uh, I just felt worked better visually for the finished project um, it is possible to make it with the number five uh, you might need to make a few adjustments as far as uh, because the zippers will finish out a little bit wider on the sides here but uh, it is doable because I did make a few prototypes with the the, the wider zipper um, Sherry says, "What juki do you use? Um, I have they. I have two jukis. They're about the same, exact same. One is the juki TL 2010Q, and the other one is the juki QVP 2200 Mini. The main difference is the second one that I mentioned came with more sewing machine feet, but uh, the first one is usually generally um, less expensive and." Um, I do have a video on my YouTube channel showing the different features of my sewing machine. Um, if you just uh, do a search in YouTube on the Sew so Sweetness channel, if you just type in sewing machine, that video should pop up. Um, Rosalyn wants to know, is iron on foam a big no-no? Really hard to get the sew and foam here in New Zealand. Or do any English hand piecing? So it's been some time. I was working on the free quilt along to go with the new hexagon book. It was, um, I really enjoyed working on it. It was all these large rosettes that you fit in together at the end to make um, one large quilt I got about I think I was on the fourth rosette so I had quite some way to go uh, I haven't worked on it in a while I, I do still have it I have pieces cut out uh, ready for the next rosette uh, I don't know I've been working on my cross stitch lately um, instead of that but one day I'll get back to it Tammy wants to know, can you remind us of when the book review will be again? I got the book and forgot to write the date down. Uh, sure, I actually meant to put this link in the description for tonight's show and I forgot. So on April 18th, we'll be discussing um, a book club selection called uh, Quilting Isn't Funny. The author is Megan Doherty and um, it'll be a little bit different than previous book club discussions. I will be uh, chatting with the author live on the show on April 18th. Um, I do have a, a little side note that I want to mention about that particular book. There is some colorful imagery and language in the book. So if those types of things offend you, perhaps skip that book and um, jump on for another book club selection in the future. I haven't decided on a future book or a future date, but um, sometime in the future we will have more book club selections. And again, that will be on um, this next book will be on April 18th on our usual live time slot. 
Diane says, I just received my first Decoville heavy order. Is my domestic machine going to sew through it or should I definitely always keep it out of my seams? So I generally, I think not, just about every single time I use uh, Decoville heavy or Pellon Peltex, I cut it minus the seam allowance. So you can just, whatever the seam allowance is in the pattern that you're working on, or perhaps the pattern already notes that in the instructions, just cut it minus the seam allowance and I think your sewing machine will be a lot happier. Nancy says, what is a non-separating zipper? Then why would you, why or would you use one? So a separating zipper is the type of zipper that you would see, um, perhaps you have a zipper jacket or a hoodie where you zip it all the way to the bottom and then when it gets to the bottom, it kind of opens and separates, um, hence the name zip, separating zipper. Most of the zippers that we use for bag making are the non-separating zipper type. <coughs> Um, B says with the pie belt, could you use the number five zipper, but do a three eighths of an inch seam to make it smaller? Uh, I personally haven't done that, but, uh, I don't see why that wouldn't work. Uh, Renee says, hi, this is my first visit to your Sunday show. Thank you so much, Renee. And if that's your puppy thanks in the for picture, joining. your dog is adorable. Um, thanks for all you do. Sundays are nice to look forward to. Thank you so much. We really love doing the show and I always look forward to on Sunday morning, I really look forward to the show because I feel it gives me a sense of purpose. I have something to look forward to. I know you guys are all going to be watching and uh, just some something exciting and um, a great part of my week. Probably the favorite, my favorite day of the whole week. Sarah says, uh, Danny, my husband commented that this week Sarah hasn't gotten a water break. <laughs> I'm giving her multiples and she can stop anytime. I'm not like <laughs> pinching her leg, leg saying, hey, answer the questions. I think it's just in my head. I feel like... <clears throat> I know when I watch people on TV and they have a water break, it looks perfectly normal. But for some reason in my head, I'm like, either take a, a quick water break or or just don't drink water because uh, there, you know, you have questions to answer and that might look awkward if you're just sitting there drinking. But I know I really should stop and have a drink of water. Um, Cindy says, what parts of the bag can you use uh, on Pelon uh, number 71? So. Pellon number 71 is the single-sided fusible type. Uh, I guess it depends on what bag you're looking, you're working on and what type of structure you're intending for that particular bag. Um, if you're not sure or if you have a, a pattern that you're working on, um, if you're not sure where to Im implement that particular interface interfacing, you can always email me and I'm happy to help. Uh, Rolanda says, or don't fuse it at all. I ordered a bolt of sewing and got double-sided fusible from Pellon. Yeah, that's uh, a great comment on what to do with uh, if you're if you've got a fusible interfacing but you don't want it to be a fusible if you want it to act as a sew-in um, that's a great tip jesse says do you plan on getting an industrial machine um i have admired industrial machines from afar do you remember when we went to that quilt shop uh this was yes. probably a couple years ago um you want to talk for just a second and uh, what do i remember about it it was a large yeah. machine um mm -hmm. It was just a bigger machine. It looked very similar, still steel, steel case. It was built into the table. I was more interested in the um, embroider machine that had like 10 needles. That was more cool to me. <laughs> um, I'd like to get one um, in our old house. It wouldn't have been possible because we wouldn't have had the room. Um, I probably will never get one though because I feel like as a pattern designer, having an industrial machine, I might be working on some designs that might be possible on an industrial, but might be really difficult on a regular domestic machine. And I feel like I want to stay in the realm of what's reasonable as far as sewing machine, uh, uh, sewing patterns go, um, as far as designs go. So I'll probably just always stick with, to be honest, uh, my Juki sewing machines. It's pretty strong. It is strong. Yeah. Boop. You calling on the questions? Yes. All right. I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I will be back again next Sunday answering some more questions. Um, I decided to, I don't know, I've been giving away gift certificates lately and I decided to give an, away another $40 gift certificate. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to announce uh, the winner of last week's giveaway and that winner is Michelle Maestas. So congratulations, congratulations to Michelle. Michelle. Um, please do contact me after the show. Um, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. And again, congratulations to you. And the giveaway for this week is a $40 gift certificate to sosweetness.com. And uh, one randomly drawn winner will be chosen at the end of the day this Saturday and announced on next Sunday's show. All you need to do to enter is answer my question in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are watching this show. My question is, what is your favorite fabric color or what favorite, what is your fabric color that you use most often in your projects? So 
My favorite color is green, but I feel like I don't often use green in the finished uh, fabrics as far as exteriors. Uh, my eye tends to be drawn to turquoise, blue. What, what do you I think? I like purples, for? light blues. Purples, yeah, purples are a good one too. Um, so let me know in the comments and we'll announce the winner on next Sunday's show. I hope you have a great week. Thank you, Happy everyone. Happy sewing. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye.